All right. As promised, ladies and gentlemen, next, se next section is chapter 15, section four, the last uh, section in chapter 15. And it is titled American Art and Literature. Again, looking at the big picture, we're talking about American art and literature in the 1800s during this period of reform. We've talked about educational reformers and Dorothea Dix, and we've talked about temperance reform and the movement to ban alcohol. And we've talked about the abolitionist reforms, and we've talked about the call for women's rights. Today, we're going to be looking at changes and uh, new styles of art and literature during this period of reform in America. Chapter 15, Section 4. Uh, this mini lecture will be posted on the Schoology feed and also posted will be the link, the uh, Quizlet link of your vocab terms, of which uh, we've got, I believe, four, and they're listed at the top of the, uh, the reading here today, too. Four vocab terms for Chapter 15, four, American Art and Literature. First vocab term, Hudson River School. And notice that Hudson River is capitalized. Hudson River School is a group of artists who painted the landscapes of our Hudson Valley or Hudson River Valley region here in uh, upstate New York. Second word is individualism. And that means a way of thinking that stresses the importance of each individual person. Individualism, stressing the uh, importance of the individual person, each individual person. Next word is transcendentalist. That's a long one. Uh, a transcendentalist was a person who believed that uh, the most important truths in life go beyond human reason and can oftentimes go beyond our ability to understand. So we're going to be looking at a group of people called the transcendentalists who studied or practiced what's called transcendentalism. Okay. And lastly, we're going to look at the term civil disobedience. Civil disobedience is the idea that people have a right to disobey laws that are unjust if their consciences demand it. Uh, civil disobedience has been practiced for thousands of years. Uh, examples of civil disobedience throughout history. Jesus Christ practiced civil disobedience. Martin Luther King Jr. practiced civil disobedience. But uh, before King Jr. in the United States, we're going to look at civil disobedience in the mid to late 1800. So there's our four vocab terms, uh, which are all available on the Quizlet site. And we'll take a look next at the reading and the attached worksheet. So let's hop to the reading here. Up until the early 1800s, American writers and painters looked to Europe for inspiration. And that makes kind of sense because uh, most writers and painters in, in around 1800 in uh, in the United States, uh, most of them had been uh, weaned on or had been very familiar with life in Europe. So a lot of their art and a lot of their literature is going to focus on their experiences in Europe. But around 1800, okay, around 1800, a shift begins. And by 1820, however, American artists would begin to explore American themes, things that were distinctly American including uh, landscapes, including architecture, including the, uh, the beauty of the natural world in the United States. So by the early uh, 1820s, Americans are going to focus uh, on things that are uniquely American in both their art and in their literature. American painters in the 1800s began to develop their own styles. And the first group was the Hudson River School, of artists. And these artists painted landscapes of the Hudson River region of New York. Yes, our Hudson River. Yes, our neck of the woods uh, right here in and around Albany. Other American painters painted scenes of country people and frontier life. And still others, for the first time, uh, will begin to show in both art and literature the experience of uh, experiences and the cultures of Native American peoples in the United States. This is something that's new also. Uh, two writers, Washington Irving and James Fenimore Cooper, wrote about the American past. A later writer, Henry Rodsworth Longfellow, wrote poems about historical events. And the poet Walt Whitman celebrated democracy and the diversity of the United States. 
One writer that is not mentioned here that I am going to add to our discussion is a writer in the mid 1800s who will become uh, known really as the first American horror writer, uh, and that will be uh, Edgar Allan Poe. Uh, we look at Stephen King today and we look at some of the American writers who write some really, really creepy and, and, and spooky stories. Well, the first American writer that will delve into that genre of writing really will be Edgar Allan Poe. And linked to your Schoology page will be an interesting video um, about Edgar Allan Poe, who is really considered the father of modern American horror writing. Two major American writers, uh, two other major American writers were Ralph Waldo Emerson and Henry David Thoreau. And both of these gentlemen believed in individualism, okay? And they were also transcendentalists. Emerson stressed that people had what he called an inner light that they could use to guide their own lives. And Thoreau urged people to live simply, uh, as simple as possible. And he set an example by living alone in a cabin in the woods in Massachusetts uh, for a year. He also practiced civil disobedience as well. He went to jail because he did not believe in paying taxes to support a war that promoted slavery. So all of these individuals and all these movements were very, very uh, important in the mid 1800s. And they all relate to American art and literature. Let's take a look at the diagram at the bottom of the worksheet. We've got the title of the diagram, American Writers and Painters in the Mid 1800s. And there are four questions that relate to each of the people that we've just talked about. And the four questions really relate to uh, any and all of the individuals mentioned in the reading, in addition to Edgar Allan Poe. What did these American uh, writers and painters do? They explored American themes in their work, uniquely and distinctly American themes for the first time. Um, what did writers describe? American writers uh, generally described uh, our past, our daily life, and our ideals, the things that we believed that were important in the mid-1800s. Also, what did artists show? What did artists show in their paintings and in their artwork? Well, in the mid-1800s, artists began showing landscapes, peoples, and cultures in their artwork. And what makes this unique is that for the first time, really, artists were now painting and drawing and sculpting pieces of art that were uniquely American. They weren't really relying on the European experience to, uh, to give them inspiration for their artwork. They were really relying on the American experience and things that were uniquely American. And finally, why, a, why are the writers and painters in the mid 1800s important? Uh, each of these writers and painters made Americans feel proud of their unique culture. It was a culture different from the European culture of the 18th century. And it proved to Europeans as well that Americans had begun to develop their own culture. All these things are important in the diagram in helping to understand American writers and painters in the mid 1800s. Now there are two questions at the bottom of the reading that I'd like you guys to work on and you can complete these in a Google Doc if you would for me. Um, how, did Americans, uh, how did American writers change in the 1820s? You can rely on the uh, reading for, uh, to answer those questions. How did American writers change? And the diagram skills, I'd like you to use the diagram to answer the second question. How did the literature and art created in the mid 1800s uh, affect the way people felt about being American. How did the things that we described here that were created in the mid 1800s, how did that affect the way that people felt about being American? Uh, this video, this mini lecture will be posted on your Schoology uh, feed. It will also be saved in your materials and also the vocab terms for 15.4, the last section of chapter 15, all those vocab terms, and I believe there are four of them, they are available on Quizlet for you guys to study and become familiar with as well. After this section, we will start again with the next lesson on chapter 16.
as well as we move toward uh, the Civil War.